Hello, I am J.R. Murdoch, author, reader, writer. Find out more about me at jrmurdoch.com. And I am J. Daniel Sawyer, and I have a hat problem and a writing problem and a reading problem. And you can find out all about me at jdsawyer.net. And we're here to talk about books. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Dan, have you heard about Kickstarter? Oh, yeah. I did my first Kickstarter back in 2012 and did quite well with it. I um, have one of my author friends had a book that was in the trunk that I thought needed to see the light of day. And so I bought the audio rights and we produced a full cast audio book of Gail Carriger's Crud Rat. And not only did it start out well on Kickstarter, but it's been doing well ever since. And, and I, I have had my eye on Kickstarter for a very long time. Unfortunately to say yours was not the first Kickstarter that I backed. The first Why is that unfortunate? I think that's fantastic. I have backed many Kickstarters. In fact, hold on, let me dig out of the stack here. This was the first Kickstarter I backed. Snarf Quest. Snarf Quest. If you remember, <laughs> nice. Dungeon Magazine had Snarf Quest in the back of every episode. And somebody finally went and collected them all, put them in a hardcover edition. Actually, Elmore collected it. This was the first Kickstarter I backed, and that's what attracted me to it, kick, kick, Kickstarter. And from then Fantastic. on, I had a Kickstarter addiction. And I've backed close to 1,000 Kickstarters to this point. Wow. Um, nice. I am a heavy backer. I love finding new content out there, whether it be graphic novels, whether it be literary novels. It's fun to go find fiction on Kickstarter. But that leads me to an interesting thing that happened recently. I don't know if you've heard. Brandon Sanderson had a Kickstarter. Uh, I did. Of, he had a Kickstarter a couple of years ago and raised about $6 million, which, <laughs> which was absolutely fascinating. And I was like, oh, my gosh, look at this author doing this. Well, he decided he to do it, it again. again. Yeah. The pandemic hit and he had some spare time and he wrote four extra novels that the publisher didn't know about. And he decided, I'm going to do myself a Kickstarter. <laughs> Have you heard where it's at? Uh, last I checked, it was at what, 25 or 26 million? Uh, I checked today and it was sitting at 32 million. He is wow. the, far and away the most successful Kickstarter ever to happen. Not yep. just fiction, but the most successful Kickstarter. That it's interesting. Fantastic. It's interesting to see some of the talk about it because video games, I... I I realize they're out there, but I never even thought about it. Video games have raised significant amount of money on Kickstarter oh, yeah. before. And the previous, from what I understand, the previous biggest Kickstarter in video games was $27 million. Mm -hmm. He's blowing that He's record blowing away. He's blowing that away now. Oh, it's, it's amazing to see it happen. But <laughs> Good for one him. Of, one of the things I saw on Twitter that confused me is... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got to get on Twitter and see what these people are talking about because sometimes I, I get on Twitter and it's like, what? What are you talking? Well, it's that about? fastest gun in the West thing. It's the ah, someone's doing really well and I'm jealous, so I'm going to claim that their success comes at my expense. Exactly, exactly. And that's I, I looked at that and everyone is kind of saying, oh, Sanderson just sucked all the air out of Kickstarter. <laughs> no, he didn't. He just proved the market. Exactly. As I said, I've backed a lot of Kickstarters. And just because I back, back Brandon Sanderson doesn't mean I'm not going to go back somebody else if I find it to be an interesting project. Yeah, I was going to say, you just backed me like uh, the one I did three months ago for Secrets of the Heinlein Juvenile. Exactly. And it was an interesting project. I, I'm i going to thoroughly enjoy that book once I get to it. I, I do have my copy back here. but Oh, you should hold it up so people can see because it's available in regular uh, outlets now. Hold on. I have it handy. <laughs> <laughs> I should have had my copy here. There we go. <laughs> See, you got to be prepared for these things. And I, I can't wait to dig in. And that's, that is a nice book. I got to say, but that's my whole point is it's just like walking to a bookstore just because insert famous author name here released a book. James Patterson dropped a book. Hmm. Nora Roberts dropped a book. That doesn't mean that nobody's buying any other book. Well, and the thing about Kickstarter is that it seems to work a little more like old bookstores did, 
Whereas uh, with Amazon, if you want a book, you go on, you order it, you don't think about it, you go away. Yep. With Kickstarter, people seem to come in for the project they're interested in, and then they're like, well, while I'm here, I'm going to take a browse around and see what else I can pick up that's interesting. That's what we've lost with bookstores, and Kickstarter for some, somehow has brought that back, at least in the small way. And I dig that. Oh, absolutely. I love the fact that when you back a Kickstarter, like you back, back Brandon Sanderson's Kickstarter, it'll say, maybe you would like, and it'll give you another I know, selection. Right? I mean, it's, it, yes, that happens on Amazon, but sometimes those suggestions are really terrible. And it's yeah, like, and now they're all paid placement anyway. They're not algorithmically yes. generated anymore. Yep. Just because I bought the 11 latest Kevin J. Anderson book doesn't mean I want to go buy some rom com book. Uh, where did that come from? <laughs> Urban fantasy, I can kind of get, but I just, speaking of Kevin J. Anderson yeah. and sucking the wind out of Kickstarter, two other authors, <laughs> literally the day after Brandon Sanderson's Kickstarter launched, which means, you know, they already had it planned for that date. And they had no idea about Brandon Sanderson's Kickstarter mm -hmm. the day after. And the second day after two more campaigns come out, one by okay. Dean Wesley Smith, who said, you guys are not seeing the bigger picture if you think he sucked the air out of Kickstarter. Yeah. And then Kevin J. Anderson, the day after, launched his Kickstarter. So you know, you know, they didn't just go, oh my gosh, I got to rush this out. I know, you right? Don't, you don't do that with Kickstarter. Yeah. And both of them launched and They're backed within really well. hours. Yep. Both of them. And last I checked, uh, I haven't looked at Kevin's, but Dean's is at. Uh... Was it seven or eight thousand of on a one thousand or two thousand ask since I yep. or when I last looked at it? Yep, and Kevin's is doing I want to say slightly better, but I need to look. I believe he's coming up on his fifth stretch goal. It wouldn't and, surprise me. Kevin Kevin's audience is bigger, and his name recognition is better. So, yep, and that's from the Dune series. For those that don't know who mm -hmm. we're talking about, Kevin Janison worked with um, Brian Herbert. Brian Herbert, yep, on carrying on the legacy of the Dune books. Both of them, boom, took off. Yes, now, yes, I get they have audiences, but that doesn't mean everybody who's backing them knows exactly who they are. No, they just said, I, hey, I do this not have a huge audience. And for secrets, I got uh, 8,000 some odd on a $1,000 ask. So it's not just the audience, it's the product. It's not your audience, it's the audience. That's the question. Yep, yep. And it's, and it's the Kickstarter audience. And I think people are misunderstanding how big that audience truly is. I'm surprised. I'm a lot of these Kickstarter campaigns will back with a hundred, 150 backers mm -hmm. and they'll reach incredible numbers. Yeah. I think I, I have 120 backers. Yeah. And I haven't looked at Brandon's Kickstarter, but last time I looked, there were over 1300 backers. Wow. And if you think about that's that, both a lot of backers and that's a lot of money per backer. Exactly. Ooh. Because of the way he did his, I don't know if we want to get too deep in the weeds about how to run a Kickstarter campaign, but he's got a lot of levels and you can back on. I just want the eBooks. I just want the audio books. I just want the print books. I want a combination of the two. I want to get a gift box every single month along with the eBooks or with the audio books or with mm -hmm. the print books. I want to get everything. I want to get the audio, the print, the ebook, and the boxes. He has mm -hmm. levels, anything you want to back, all the way up the chain. And add-ons. I believe he had add-ons, too. I'd have to go look. But you, know, you and I both have, uh, have um, back, uh, but bibliographies that are big enough that we could do, uh, it, we, we could do boxed, sign, uh, not box sets, but signed sets of everything we've got in print as a top-tier goal or as a oh. top-tier rewards level. Absolutely. And that's, that's one of the things that I've been interested in, in watching all this happen. I've followed so many people that have run Kickstarter campaigns that have been successful with their Kickstarter campaigns. I've even helped people fine tune their campaign to get that little bit of extra money out of it, to mm -hmm. just squeeze that lemon a little bit harder and get all the juice they can out of it. And it's fun to see a campaign succeed. It's fun to contribute and help which has gotten the bug in me. It's like, oh my gosh, I would love to run a campaign now. Um, <laughs> yeah, you got to stop the... Monday morning quarterbacking and jump onto the field, my friend. Exactly. I need to, to, to stop coaching and, you know, throw my hat in the ring. 
No, 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 no. Keep that reference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get the half reference in there. But anyway, it's, it's, I really think people, whether you're a reader and you want to discover something new, Kickstarter is an amazing place to go. Yep. If you're a writer and you want to discover a new audience, Kickstarter is a great place to go. There are a lot of fiction products, projects out there. Mm-hmm. One interesting and thing that I fiction projects and nonfiction and graphic novels and art books, table, coffee table books. It's there's so much out there to go explore. But one thing I found really fascinating is I started getting spam the other day from Kickstarter <laughs> and I'm like, what's, what's going on? What is this? And I noticed that it's one particular backer going and backing a whole bunch of fiction projects. And I'm like, mm-hmm. wait, wait, that name looks really familiar. Yeah. It's Brandon Sanderson's company. It's the ones running the Kickstarter campaign. When you end up backing a campaign, you usually end up becoming a follower of that campaign runner. Yeah. And whenever they perform an action, you get a notification. A lot of them fell off into my spam folder because I was getting so many of them. Yep. They went and started backing fiction yeah. campaigns left and right. I don't have confirmation of this. I did see a pardon our mess post on the Kickstarter campaign. Sorry about that. We didn't know that was going to happen, <laughs> but I believe it was their way of saying, you know what? We are Let's eating this really big cake and that cake and that cake. And we got a dozen more cakes in the back. <laughs> we're going to dole out a couple of pieces and let's, you know, help other people with their campaigns, which I think is absolutely brilliant on their part because now it draws in even more backers because people are like, okay, yeah, yeah. These guys are doing a great thing. It was, it was neat to watch and it was neat to see them uh, explain that. So uh, I need to go watch Brandon Sanderson's YouTube channel because I believe he explained it. Cool. Yeah, I haven't been able to check that out yet, but I need to. Oh, yeah. Some of his videos are a bit long-winded. Uh, Wait, yeah, and that's why I went, to this, I went to the channel, and I was like, I don't have an hour and a half right now. Oh, that's one of his shorter ones. My gosh, I logged in. He had a two-hour, 40-minute one, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I, no. I... <sighs> bites, bite sizes. Speaking of bite yep. sizes, we should probably wrap this up because we that's don't right, want to drag we this on too keep long. It, keep it nice and short. Anyway. And, uh, so speaking about Kickstarter, next time, I think we should give a little bit of, of breath to your Kickstarter campaign, not just talking about your book, which obviously I need to read and is going to be good, but mm-hmm. we should talk about some uh, Highland Juveniles. Sounds good. All right. Until next time, Dan. All right. See you around, Jay.